Hi and welcome. Today we are going to read the explanation notes of packing which is taken from Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat. The extract is taken from Jerome K. Jerome's novel Three Men in a Boat. The writer liked to pack luggage for trips and announced that he would like to pack. On hearing the declaration, there is a sight of an amuse, amusement when two friends decide to do nothing but to sit and watch Jerome packing the luggage. The assumption, it was assumed by Jerome that his ability to pack luggage was better than George, his friend George and Harris. He asked his friends George and Harris to leave the task of packing to him. The two friends agreed to his kindness and right away, which was quite strange. George made himself comfortable on the easy chair while Harris bent his knees as he sat on the sofa and kept his feet on the table. Jerome was quite annoyed by their behavior and then he tried explaining what did he mean by he would leave it to him. He wanted to guide his friends or rather boss over them and tell them what to do instead of packing himself. Jerome recalled that in the past he was living with a man who was very lazy. He would sit on the sofa all day and he would watch the writer do all the work. He never got around to check what his subordinates were doing. Jerome never wanted to be like them. He wanted to be the leader or the boss who would go around checking the work of his subordinates. That is why he wanted to guide Jerome, uh, Harris and George and tell them how to pack. But it did not turn out the way he wanted. Let us explore one by one what happened while packing. The writer did not say anything to his friends and started packing. As he closed it, Harris said that he had forgotten to pack the boots. Harris was definitely waiting to have some kind of fun and he was waiting till Jerome packed the suitcase and then he declared that he had forgotten to pack his boots. The writer felt that Harris could have reminded him earlier and that, that irritated him irritated him quite a lot. Then came the story of the toothbrush. The toothbrush was it was a menace that uh, Jerome always forgot his toothbrush whenever he uh, left for a trip. Once he had left it and then he forgot and then he had to go back, unpack and then in this case when he remembered about the toothbrush he unpacked to look, looking for it and then he packed it again and when he packed it he wanted to use it and then he had to unpack the suitcase once more he used it packed it again but unfortunately he forgot to pack the toothbrush once more this was quite hilarious he wraps it in a handkerchief and carries it to the railway station in his hand the mess the toothbrush in a boot uh, as Jerome was looking for his toothbrush in his bag, he had to remove everything but he could not find it. He created quite a mess. He found his friend's brushes many times but he could not find his own brush. He kept everything back into the bag one by one, shaking each item and finally found the brush inside a boot. Then once again he repacked the bag. Then came the hilarious moments of the spectacles and the basket. When Jerome closed the bag, Jerome asked if the soap was packed. That was quite irritating indeed. Jerome ignored it and then he went on packing. They nearly finished the packing by 10, 5 minutes past 10 pm. Then they had to pack the food baskets. Harry said that they were left with less than 12 hours to leave. He should pack the baskets as well. Harris decided that the food baskets would be packed by him and George. Jerome agreed to take this turn for some rest while his friends packed the baskets. 
Now then came the issue of food hamper. George and Harry started packing the hamper in a very happy mood. They wanted to show Jerome that they could pack together. Jerome waited for them to create a mess because he considered Harris to be the worst at packing. Jerome looked at the piles of plates, cups, kettles, bottles, the jars, pies, cakes and tomatoes which had to be packed into the hampers. He thought that as the boys would mess up, it would be an interesting thing to watch. Breaking things and then came the destructions. Laughter and fun began when they started packing the cups and one by one they started breaking it. Then Harris packed the strawberry jam on top of the tomatoes and squashed it. Un unfortunately, he had to scrape it out using a spoon. The destruction continued with the butter, the butter and the pies that continued for quite some time. They squashed all the pies as they topped heavy things on top of it. The confusion continued with the butter. It was left on the chair and then it was not to be found at all. The mystery of the missing butter was the most vicarious part of it. George looked intently at the empty seat on which he had placed the butter. But few minutes ago, he took an oath of truthfulness that he had placed it there not even a minute ago. It could not be located at all. Harry said that the, the disappearance of the butter was a mystery. George saw the butter sticking on Harris's back. Unfortunately, he sat on that seat. It was uh, uh, removed and it was packed back inside the teapot. The pet dog Montmorency, he was quite a menace. He kept poking his nose into everything that they were packing. And when they were, whenever they tried reaching for something, they found the cold nose of the dog and they, um, they were quite irritated by his behavior. Harris blamed Jerome for encouraging Montmorency for doing all that mischief, to which Jerome replied that Montmorency never required all that encouragement if he was born as a mischievous dog. The hamper and for, uh, and eventually the entire packing was done, the suitcase was ready which was regarded by them as a hamper and it was quite a huge box as the entire household was in it. After packing they went off to bed and that was also an argument when they wanted to when they decided when to wake up. Jerome wanted to wake up at 6, Harris wanted to wake up at 7 and after the argument they all gave up half an hour of the time, their allotted time and they agreed to wake up at half past six. That was quite accommodating and when Jerome went to bed, George and Harris continued with their mischief. They placed the bathtub just next to Jerome's bed so that when he wakes up, he falls into it and has a bath early in the morning as he wakes up. Now after uh, reading or listening, you are requested to write a letter to your friend expressing the most hum humorous moments in Jerome K. Jerome's excerpt packing from the three men in a boat. The informal uh, the format is uh, the le informal letter. The format of the informal letter is self-address, date in the written out format that is the spelling and then spaced out dear friend instead of writing dear friend you may write the name of your friend remember the first letter of the name should be capital if it is john it should be dear john then greetings comma i that stands for myself should be capital and then the first line that means i hope this letter finds you of this letter of mine finds you in the pink of your health that means in the best of your health uh, begin with uh, my family and I are doing well. Recently, I read an excerpt packing from the novel Three Men in a Boat and written by Jerome K. Jerome and enjoyed the hilarious moments of human follies. Follies means falls. I felt that I should share the joyous recollections with you. Then you write a paragraph. It is here that you are going to enlist and describe what was amusing. Remember to use the transitional words to make your writing fluent 
and then end with i hope you will reply soon and share recollections of reading your reading rather uh, the subscription is your loving friend and then you may write your name in running letters which appears to be your signature thank you so much